Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 17. And as for you, O my flock, Israel, I judge between the cattle and the cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Uh, we got another classification of people here the rams and the goats. And the cattle and the cattle. When Jesus Christ comes back at the, at the second advent, he's going to judge between the sheep and the goats. The sheep are those people that helped Israel during the tribulation period. And they go into the millennium as gratification for, for blessing Israel. The goats are the ones that are against Israel, who curse Israel in the tribulation period, and they go into hell. Then now we have cattle and cattle. We also have sheep, which are the nation of Israel, the flock. And also Jesus said, other sheep I have can be the church. Primary is not really the church. But we do have from Jesus the classification of sheep. Now here's cattle and cattle. And what is the cattle? What has been the text? What we look at it, we're looking at shepherds. Who are feeding themselves and not feeding the flock. They're not even classified as goats, sheep, or rams. They're in their own classification. And amongst them, he's going to judge the fat and the lean. We'll see in a moment. Seemeth it a small thing unto you to have eaten up the good pastors? Now, a man that's a shepherd is not going to go out there and eat grass. Though it has been done. In Ethiopia, I've been told by a missionary, things are so poor. They do eat grass. But that's not customary for the shepherd. But God is already liking these shepherds to the cattle. And the cattle are out there eating the sheep, uh, eating the, the grass, not the sheep. <clears throat> and there was a conflict between Lot and Abraham of their having all the land. There was a there was a conflict with uh Moses' father-in-law and his daughters and the cattlemen of watering the, the cattle and warring the sheep because I, I forget which animal, but one animal, the, the cow or the sheep, will actually eat down to the roots. Where one of them just eats the vegetation. So the cattle have come along. God is liking them to cows. They're eating everything that should be for the sheep. So they're getting first dibs. How many, and I'm going to say, listen, all churches, all religions, and whatever your church leader is called, how many people in the congregation that are on the membership roll or a, a attendee of the church, how many are not surviving and are hungry? And that fat cat leader of the church, and he's out whining, he's out dining, he, he's enjoying meals and all that. And physically, this, the, the flock is, some of the flock, some of the sheep or the flock are starving. And then there's the spiritual starving that the shepherd is not feeding the spiritual food to them. So you see why they're their own little class of people. Now the church has a responsibility taking care of the pastor, and the pastor has a responsibility taking uh, care of the sheep. And one, I don't know if it's Paul or Peter or James, he writes that, you know, you, you, you got to give over to the authority of the pastor because he's got to give an account. But you must tread down with your feet the residue of your pasture. So whatever is less left in the in the in the fields in the past, you're you're destroying it with your feet. You have drunk deep waters, but ye must follow the residue with your feet. Now here's the situation. Here's here's a body of water. 
and you come along and you start drinking it, it's delicious water. Okay? Now, you go walking through it, and you kick up all the mud, you kick up all the vegetation, you kick up all the dead animals, you kick up all, you know, and then the sheep come along. It's, I mean, we, we, our cat here, we, she has fresh water. We put out for fresh water, but she likes to drink the fish water. Fresh water is not really too healthy, but she chooses that. It's not the choice of the sheep. So the shepherds are marring the food, and they're marring the physical food and mostly the spiritual food. And as for my flock, God says, my people, they eat that which you have trodden on your foot. They get the leftovers. And they drink that which you have followed with your feet. They're not getting the best. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, God speaking, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle. That's God. Saved or lost, God's going to deal with that shepherd. Now, do you recognize that fat cattle and that lean cattle? We're not going to go look at the reference, but that's what Pharaoh's dream. The, the seven lean, sick cattle were seven years of famine. And the seven fat cattle were the seven years of plenty. But it's reversed here. The fat cattle are the fat cat preachers not taking care of their flocks. The lean cattle is, you know what? They're doing all their resources, making, making sure the sheep get what they need. And in the tribulation period in which we're running to, when you read the context of the Bible, especially the book of James, written to the 12 tribes, not the church, it will be a curse to be rich in the tribulation period, because to be rich in the tribulation period, you've got to have the mark. It's you can't buy or sell. How are you going to be rich? You're in full favor of the Antichrist. How are you going to be poor? You don't take the mark. You're, you're, <laughs> you're living by what the Gentiles will hand out to you, or what you can dispose at your feet. The rich man lived presumptuously, and Lazarus laid at the gate full of sores, probably eating from his garbage. The rich man went into hell, and Lazarus went. Because ye have thrust with side and shoulder and pushed all the disease with your horn. And this is a common thing with cattle. You know, the big, strong cattle. I mean, he pushes everybody. He, he's the big cattle of the whole and there are pastor in churches and priests and whatever denomination calls your leader. There are some men behind the pulpit, behind the office of that church, and there you can't do nothing besides what they tell you to do. That's the pope. Don't you, don't you go against my tradition and my teaching because I speak extra clearly. I speak, you know, the bull. Yeah, that's a prophet's word for the for the word of the pope. The bull. I agree with that 100%. I put another four-letter word out there, but I can't say it because it's a dirty word. But I'll leave it both. And I have even met Baptist preachers. I am the authority. How dare you? How dare you question my Sunday school teacher? He is wrong. Well, I back him up. You're wrong. Okay? So there are sheep, there are disease. We read about that last night. There's, and you just push them out. We can't do We There's no benefit of you being here, except for maybe the little few dollars you put in the place. But, you know, the other people, their connection. So. And you disease with your horns. It hurts. <laughs> What disease, what troubles they have, you're making it worse. 
till you have scattered them aboard. You're the one. There, there are, there are church leaders, whatever church. I'm not pointing at a denomination, but there are church leaders. Our church split. You caused it. Well, you know that family over there, or that man over there, because of you. And they get, yeah, I got one pastor. Oh, he never had a church split. Or no, the church split. Jesus had a church split in John 6 66. How come Jesus had a church split, but you can't? Uh huh. And some of the sheep leave because you know what? <laughs> You know, sometimes if you find a dog in your neighbor or a cat in your neighbor and they're in your garbage can, or you know why they did that? Because they're not getting fed at home. I got to go somewhere else to find Now, we had a dog one time. <clears throat> we fed the dog. He took up. He, he wanted to go look her. Hey, well, what's his neighborhood I live in? And he didn't get in garbage. He's just like, hey, what? What kind of trouble can I get into? But there are there are animals out there. They will come. They're looking for food because they're not getting it home. And there are sheep in church. I, I gotta go somewhere else. And the problem is, you got these shepherds who are who are doing wrong, are wrong in the eyes of God. And then you know what? That's when they fall in the hands of Jehovah Witnesses. That's when they go to the wolves. Well, you know, I don't feel my church is praying for me. You know, if I give that television evangelist a thousand dollars and send in my prayer request, a thousand dollars goes in the bank and the prayer request goes in the garbage. It's a messed up thing, religion. There are men and women, and shouldn't be women, but there are men who get it because the ministry is such an easy job. And they make it easy. And it's not an easy job. Therefore, I will save my flock. That's God's people. Israel will be saved. God has not given up on them. They shall no more be a prey. Well, that's sure not 2022. And I will judge between cattle and cattle. God is going to judge. I will set up one shepherd over him. Okay, you say, oh, Jesus. You know, that little picture of Jesus carrying his sheep. Oh, first of all, Jesus is not Gentile. He's not white. He's not tall. And he shall feed them. Even my servant David. See, that's not Jesus. You know, we talk about, you know, the resurrection of Christians and Moses and Elijah, true, right? Paul's going to come back to life. Peter's going to come back to life. Well, if I die, I'm going to come back to life. Well, what about the resurrection of David? That you're going to have the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, seated on David's throne in Jerusalem, and under Jesus is David. Now, I don't know who completely under David is, but... You will have the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And then you will have the 12 elders of the, 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 the tribes of Israel. And then you're going to have kings, Revelation chapter 1, who are the church members, the saved, who have inherited the right to reign in cities. <laughs> David's coming back to life. He shall feed them. Why? Because he was the king. He was the faithful shepherd that took care of his sheep. And he shall be their shepherd. Now, that's in the Bible. That's plain and simple. You can't get no simpler than that. Do you want to ask, take any 10 Baptist churches, ask any five people coming out of the door, every five persons, they, um, can you tell me who the shepherd of Israel is going to be in the millennium? I guarantee you're going to get four out of five going to say, Jesus. And you, you'll say, well, what about David? What about David? I don't read the Old Testament. I don't study the scripture. I read my song. 
I got my daily devotional. I got my moldy daily bread. And I, the Lord, will be their God. That's millennium. And my servant, David, millennium, a prince among them. I, the Lord, has spoken. Now, how can you say God's all things with the Jews? David's Jewish. I will make with them a covenant of peace. There's the new covenant of the Jews. There's the peace. The millennium is peace. Salam. Jew Salam. The city of peace. Solomon, peace. There is no peace in Israel today. I will cause evil beasts to cease out of the land. How does he do that? He removes the curse. The only curse that does not come off an animal is the serpent, and he's still crawling on the ground. But a child can play with a serpent and a lion and a tiger and a bear, and mama's not going to say, oh, my. Daniel was a picture of that. Can you imagine old mama taking her baby and going up to Mr. and Mrs. Lyon and say, here, take care of my baby. I could go run down to the store. I forgot to get something. And they put that baby in the Lion-O-Matic sleep sofa. And those little kitties just purr that baby to sleep. And old baby cry, I want to rattle. And the giraffe brings over a rattlesnake. Here, play with this kid. <laughs> and they're not going to hurt that baby. And they're not going to hurt you. The lion is going to lay down with the with the cow, and it's not going to be hamburger. But who reads the Old Testament? I've heard many Christians read. Oh, I haven't read my Bible. I don't. Hey. You're more faithful to that boob tube than you are the word of God. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness, millennium, and sleep in the woods, millennium. Hey, you do that today, you got mosquitoes. I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. That's Jerusalem. What a hill. <laughs> And I will cause the showers to come down in his season. That's the early and latter rain. There'll be no flooding. There'll be no drought. It'll come exactly what they need. Now watch this. <clears throat> you ready? There shall be shadows of blessing. What are we talking about? Who are we talking about? And how dare you as a church member, as a Gentile, say, there'll be showers of blessing, showers of blessing. That's not yours. There's no church in Ezekiel 34. There's no Gentile in church 34, in Ezekiel 34. A lot of your hymns, though they're nice, they're completely wrong. Now, spiritually, we get showers of blessing. But that comes from that verse right there. And there is no Gentile, and there is no church miles and years, decades and centuries away from Ezekiel 34. That is Israel in the promised land under Jesus Christ and under David. You got to watch what you think. And the tree. Of the field. Look how he puts it singular. The tree. There's going to be a lot of trees. But the tree of the field shall yield her fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And like I said, I forget which month. I got it marked in my, well, not my new Bible. I got it when it comes to it. I got it marked and outlined it. I am going to be. Me and Lisa are going to be in the millennium. And we're going to dig up some ground. She's going to plant tomato seeds. And my children are going to be picking tomatoes right after another. That's in the scripture. It's not going to take a whole season to get the tomatoes. It's going to be instant. We are back before Genesis 3. 
when the curse is gone. And they shall be safe in their land. They're not safe in their land today. I think right now they're up to the fourth vaccine. I don't know how they got four vaccines, but I mean, we got two in a booster. And they're still getting missiles fired at them. And they shall be safe in the land. They shall know that I am the What a wonderful thing to know. There it is again. I know the Lord. How you know you are the Lord? Because all the enemies have been put down. There is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the King of the Jews, like Pilate wrote, and he's being worshipped as the Messiah. He's being worshipped as the King. He's being adorned as the Messiah. And there is David, their King, but he's not the King. He's the Prince. There is the Temple and the Temple services. There's the 12 Apostles of the Lamb. There are the 12 Elders. There are the faithful church members in, in their cities reigning. And there's this perfect peace. There's perfect, no, no curses. Everything's just hunky-dory. And we're glad. We're celebrating. And at the Feast of the, of the, of the Tabernacles, when we go worship Jesus' birthday, <laughs> because if you don't go to Jesus on the Feast of Tabernacles, you don't get a blessing in your land. And I could be wrong about the Feast of Tabernacles. I've been wrong before. You shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke. When's the last time you saw a sheep in a yoke? Sheep were not made to be yoked. They were meant to be fed, watered, uh, fleeced, and then, under some occasions, eaten. They were never made to plow the field. You don't hook up the sheep and go for a ride into the town. You're not going to go anywhere because sheep are dumb. Okay? So what did you, I can never I can never quote this verse completely right, but what did Jesus say when he came? All ye are he heavy laden. Take my yoke. What had happened? The Pharisees and the Sadducees had put in a yoke on an animal that does not deserve to be yoked. Did you get that? And Jesus says, come into my yoke. Sheep were not made to be yoked. And when Paul speaks about a preacher, a pastor of a church, he likens him to an ox. And ox are put in yokes. Ox are made to work, not the sheep. Ooh, that could be a message there. And deliver them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. And those little shepherds, it's only for me. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen. That's Gentile. There's the Gentiles. Neither shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. They ain't today. There are women walking. I've seen pictures. There are women holding hands with their boyfriends, and the women got an AK-7 wrapped around instead of a purse. The boys and girls are learning how to use slingshots, and it's not for gain and pleasure. It's that that lion or bear comes, and I ain't talking about the animals, and I am talking about the, the animals too. You got the Catholics running around trying to say that, that, you know, the Catholics hate the Jews. You got the Arabs running around, and stupid Christians pay them, oh, they're going to tell us what the Bible. <laughs> really? When they believe in Allah, smack you across your spiritual face a couple times, idiot. They hate Israel. When you pay that Catholic or you pray, you pay that Arab, you are paying the enemies of Israel. Now, why can't you find an, an Israeli to tell you about you know the things of Jesus? Because they don't believe in Jesus. 
They despised Jesus. And the Catholics only do it for the money. I mean, the Catholics like, you know, your uh, your family member died. Give us money, we'll pray them out of purgatory. Well, I thought the Pope, I thought that Pope closed the doors. Nonsense. So, make them afraid. They're afraid today. I will raise up for them a plant of renown. Branch, capital B. And then Jesus said, if they do this to, uh, to a green tree, what shall they do? And they shall no more consume with hunger in the land. So in the millennium, there's going to be no more drought, no more starvation. Because the law said, if you're on your journey, and you're going down the road, and, and here's a guy who's got strawberries or tomatoes, you can sit down and enjoy the tomato. You just can't put any in your bag. You won't need to put them in your bag in a millennium. Every single place you go is going to be fruitfulness. There'll be food everywhere. When you run that law to the millennium, and I have, well, you know, the law is not going to be in the millennium. You're full. Why is the temple there? We're going to come up in the pages of Ezekiel pretty soon. We're going to talk about that temple. Not all preachers and pastors are right. Neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. The heathen that are in the millennium are the ones that help Israel, and they're going to be very appreciated that they help Israel, that the Messiah let them in the millennium, but they ain't going to do them no harm. They'll probably be like, hey, what can we do to help you more? If we got this much blessing. I mean, one of the prophets say, they're going to grab hold of a Jew and say, come on, take us to the Messiah. They shall know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, Israel, in the millennium. Don't tell me God's offering is the Jew. Because you can't say heathen, because the heathen showed up, verse 28, as enemies. And that day, even the house of Israel, just in case you didn't get it right, are my people, in case you didn't get it right. I wonder what modern Bibles do with that. Say if the Lord God. All right, can you get more clear than that? Yes, there are Jews who are in hell, in hell and they're going to go to hell. But as a corporate body, Israel are God's people, and there are Jews today that will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and they will get saved. And they will be Jews in the, in the tribulation period. They will defile the mark of the beast. They will listen to the 144 elders. They will adhere to Moses and Elijah, and they will do the commandments of God. And when Jesus comes, they will believe, hey, there he is. And ye, my flock, and the flock of my pastor. Have you ever heard that quoted by a church in the past? The flock of my flock. Ever hear the Catholic Church quote that? That ain't you. You know what the problem with the church today and the Catholic Church and all these other people? They try to claim the replacement theology that God's all finished with the Jew. It's ours. And even the Baptist Church are guilty with that. And your hands and some of the things you say, you are stealing from the Jew. Friend, that's cursing the Jew. You're going to get a curse. Better be careful what you, you better be careful to run the, to the gospel of Matthew and start claiming the things of Matthew where there is no church, it belongs to Israel. Better be careful because a lot of churches run to Matthew. Oh, the Sermon on the Mount. Ye are my flock, the flock of my pastor are men. And I am your God, saith the Lord God. Simple, simple, simple. 